big up the one and only Scream. So Scream posted this on Twitter. Unfortunately, I had to go on, on my burner to get this screenshot because I discovered in the process of trying to find this screenshot that Scream was another person that blocked me on social media. People love to block and I don't know why. I don't even think I've said anything bad to this guy. Like, I actually like him. I like Scream and Benga. And, you know, I used to watch this guy play all the time all, all over London and shit. But whatever reason, maybe he saw my comments somewhere else on some other Twitter feed and got annoyed with it. But unfortunately, Scream blocked me. So I couldn't, you know, screenshot it on my main account. I had to fucking make a dummy account, which is fucking gay as fuck to do. But I did it anyway. Um, this particular tweet um, really broke my heart um, because obviously, um, you know, I've been speaking a lot about the unfortunate passing of Jackmaster. Um, RIP, the one and only Jackmaster. And it kind of, I don't know, man, it just, it's heartbreaking because it kind of shows you the reality of the situation we're currently in, the, st the current state of affairs in the industry and just society at large. And the fact that we don't really live in a redemption culture, really. We live in a place where people just want you to kind of suffer and kind of, you know, be in a situation that you're in forever and ever and ever. So let me actually get you the piece here that I want to see. Bear with me one secundo. So this is the post here, courtesy of Jack Master, and it says the following. Wish all the people posting about Jack would have been more vocal when he was actually alive. So many brands, magazines, etc., who would never mention his name now seem to have it all in their mouths. Token industry nonsense. That's very true, because in, in, the, in the wake of Jack Master's unfortunate passing, there's been such an outpouring, crazy, crazy outpouring of love. People saying how much he meant, how much, you know, Jack Master meant to them, the times that they've seen him, sharing clips, sharing really funny stories, blah, 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 blah. But the reality situation is Jack Master was in a pretty bad place in his career, especially when you can think of how it started, right? He was, you know, one of the hottest DJs in the industry, killing it, playing in all different places all over the world. And then unfortunately, he got into a situation where it was a, he was accused by festival staff for being inappropriate you know, sexual harassment and shit. And from what I remember the story, from what I remember, he was off his face on drugs. At the time, people thought it was Ket or Coke and shit, but I think later on, I remember watching a Vice documentary on GHB and how popular that was. He took part in that documentary and he was quite candid and said, yeah, I was going through crazy GHB addictions. And if you know anything about GHB, you'll know it's a liquid. And I remember him saying that he had like, he would buy GHB by the bottle. I don't even know that. Again, I'd, I've never taken it. I know people that do, but he would buy GHB by the litre bottle. So I, I can't imagine how much that is, but he would be getting through that on his own and just be super, super fucked up. And, and I remember as well at that time, because, you know, there wasn't, I don't think the dance music social media forum thing was as big as it is now on Reddit. But I remember the time the word around the scene was that there were times when, when Jack Master RIP would be so fucked, he couldn't play and sometimes there'd be he'd come and he'd be with a friend and they'd be playing instead he'd be in the booth jostling around but he wasn't actually playing because he was so fucked up or he'd just be so fucked up he had to cancel his gigs a lot so that was the current narrative i was running around him but if anything for, for someone like myself that's a fan of his that added to his mystery that added to his allure that added to his appeal because he was this rock star dj guy anyway long story less long when he was in this documentary he did speak about how GHB negative affected him and he didn't make an excuse for it, but he did say at the time when he was really addicted to GHB, that might have ex partly explained why he did the thing that he was accused of doing, which was sexual harassing those girls at that festival. When it happened though, I remember him being very apologetic, owning up to it instantly. And I think that was also around the time when other big DJs were going down and they were not admitting it. They were basically gaslighting and victim blaming and they were kind of ignoring it and lowering up and stuff. But Jack Muscle was one of the only people I remember that went through what he went through, being accused of sexual harassment by a girl. And he honestly, 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 honestly said at the time, hey, um, this is not something that I did, you know, I didn't do this stuff on purpose. No, no, so, but I, I took responsibility for what I did. I'm sorry, I apologize. And I think at the time, for whatever reason, the apology wasn't accepted. I don't know understand why though. I never understood why at the time. Maybe it goes, maybe it, it, it was, if looking back at it, maybe the reason why he wasn't kind of welcomed back with open arms was because maybe behind the scenes he really was a bad dude. I don't know. But for everything I've read online, it doesn't seem like he was. It seemed like everybody loved him. So I've always wondered why when he did own up to his mistakes, when he did go and seek help, when he did take time away from the scene, 
and he did all the necessary things you need to do to kind of you know um to have forgiveness especially for the people involved because if i'm not mistaken the girls involved i think he even offered to kind of take you know hand himself into the police they said no they were happy with his apology the festival was happy too they moved on so i never understood why the industry at large still had a kind of like a you know, it was kind of like a media blackout on, on fucking Jack Nuss. I never understood that. It always kind of sat, didn't sit well with me because it's like, hold on, if he's actually sorry and he actually seems sincere and he's asked forgiveness from the people that he's affected and they've also moved on from it, why can't everyone else move on from it? Especially considering how, you know, full of horrible people the scene is in general. It just seems weird to kind of single out this one guy. So I'd imagine if you're screaming, you're one of his actual friends, it must be heartbreaking because you know and you know let's just call a spade a spade most likely you know he, he might have been in a fucked up situation again even though he was maybe sober for a while he might have been maybe you know misery he, he might have been trying to kind of like you know comfort himself by maybe indulging too much in drugs again because of the state of, because of the place where his career was at you know not being booked and busy as much as he was i remember when i actually you know found out about his passing and did my googles and checked his ra he wasn't as booked as i thought he would be booked so it looked like clearly certain places had still, you know, had a kind of no Jack Massa allowed policy when it comes to bookings and shit. And again, I'm just hypothesizing and speaking into the wind. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but maybe that might have affected the situation that he was in, current mind state and whatnot. So, so if you're someone like Scream or you're a close family and friend and shit, seeing people now pretending like, you know, he was the hottest thing since sliced bread and he was the best, amazing DJ, da 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 da. But these same very in this very same industry people were the ones who didn't go out of their way to kind of welcome him back into see with open arms. So it must be really, really fucking heartbreaking. But it also shows to me that there is no forgiveness for certain things, it seems like. It seems like when you are accused of certain things, regardless of if you've, you know, done the work to try to better yourself, there are some people who just would never forgive it. And maybe, maybe in some respects, Jack Master was kind of unlucky. Maybe the time that he did quote unquote get cancelled, it was the time when there was maybe a collective feeling in industry that too many men had gotten away with too many horrible things and that this was the time when enough was enough. We're going to put our foot down and permanently excommunicate these guys from the scene because I felt like for a while, guys were, guys were basically getting away with stuff and being welcome back in the industry. So maybe some women thought, or some people in the industry just thought in general, enough is enough. Once this person is cancelled, it's cancelled. Maybe that was a thing, but I would love to live in a world where there is a path back to redemption. There is an ability to kind of be welcomed back into the fold, especially in an industry where people are always drunk and high and shit. You know, like things get messy. It's just really difficult to kind of, I guess there are cases where you can kind of see where somebody is actually quote unquote, you know, black and white, an evil person. But I think there are some occasions where you can maybe, you know, dull it up to somebody maybe being under the influence or going through some horrible things, especially when you think of Jack Master. Like, he's had a lot of loss in his life, man. You know what I mean? Losing both parents, um, you know, like, at, at a young age, going through what he's going through, going, you know, trying to traverse the dance music scene. Like, he's gone through a lot of things. Again, not to say they excuses whatever he was accused of, but you would think that maybe some grace could be extended um, because of those things that he went through but unfortunately he didn't so if you're people that scream it must be doubly heartbreaking to see the very same people that were kind of purposely ignoring him and act like he didn't exist that's what it felt like for the last few years and even though he came back i felt like even the collaboration stopped i don't feel like i've seen him doing back-to-backs with like bigger dj with like djs that you would imagine he would play with before in the boiler room days i don't think he did a boiler room since he's come since he came back into industry so it seemed like he was kind of doing his own thing he wasn't really welcomed back into the scene properly which is really really heartbreaking especially someone like him who you know probably grown accustomed to being a part of that industry to be feel like you're being excommunicated must have felt fucking terrible so r.i.p to fucking jack master once again and there's also an article actually that i want to play here one moment as i get out to play oh, i think i incorrectly uh big up nj ranger i think i incorrectly hid i think i incorrectly hid you on my channel i'll i'll, I'll make sure to edit it later but i think i incorrectly fucking my fucking fat fingers hid you there so apologies for the hiding there my friend 